pass they hit. Oh, and B used the shoulder into the face of Carroll. Now Carroll almost tackles him, and watch out! What's up, I did this? <laughs> Four, and B from outside. Time oh, is going! Up with a formula for success. And B with a new first half career high. B. Joel Embiid dropped 70 and may have just exposed the NBA. He shot 21 for 23 from the free throw line alone and only attempted two threes the entire game. After carefully observing each point, I started to realize something. Embiid may have just uncovered the truth to scoring for NBA players that has gone blatantly unnoticed. In fact, a lot of the recent high scoring that's been going on in the NBA shared this truth and it's a truth that has turned this guy into the NBA's best score. <sighs> now, just to clarify, Joel Embiid's 70 was no fluke. In fact, his performance can be broken down in the following way, and anyone, even you, could potentially take advantage of this. So if you've ever thought about scoring as much as 70 in a game, take some notes. The man is averaging 30 a nickel and a penny right now, 36. And when you think about Joel Embiid, listen, he may not catch you through the wash, but he damn sure go catch you when you coming through the rinse. Embiid won his first MVP last season. And while some may argue that Jokic was robbed of his third straight MVP award, it's hard to ignore the stats. He averaged 33.1 points, 10.2 rebounds, and 4.2 assists per game last season, making him the scoring champ. While some can make the case for Jokic averaging a near triple-double last season, it's no doubt that Embiid displayed true dominance, and this season, he went on a mission to shut down all the haters and be in a league of his own. 90 seconds to go, third quarter. Good ball movement! We're waiting to check in for the Sixers, no look. Ooh. Oh my goodness! And they're only one game on the loss side behind Boston. Oh! But it wasn't his dominance that led him to score 70 points in just one game. As a matter of fact, this is something that is happening around the entire league. So what's really going on in the league? Well, you see over the last few seasons, the offensive rating for every NBA team has significantly increased. Today's NBA has become extremely offensively minded with the hopes of not just trying to win games, but also entertaining fans. The Detroit Pistons, who currently have the lowest offensive rating, are averaging 113.3 points per game. This would have been enough to finish higher than the Warriors during their championship season in 2015, who averaged only 110 points per game. Due to the rising offensive talent in the NBA, it simply has just become harder to stop players in the half court. The amount of offensive talent that is in the league right now is just insane. I don't think people really realize it, how much talent offensively there is. Luca is absolutely right. I mean, just take a look at this bucket from Kyrie. Irving against Bullock. Oh, nasty handles. Irving curls, floats, and scores! I mean, can the defense get any better than this? He's literally not giving him any room to move, and even when help arrives, there's just nothing you can do about Kyrie's finishing. Now, while it's well known that Kyrie Irving has been one of the most offensively gifted players for a while, it's not just experienced vets that we're talking about here. Take a look at the number one pick from last year's draft. He was doing all this at just 19. Every year, the talent seems to be getting better and better. Is it a change in coaching style? A new type of workout plan? Or maybe it has something to do with trying to entertain NBA fans. The NBA's pivot toward more entertaining, high-scoring basketball has undeniably succeeded in capturing the imaginations of fans worldwide. Miranda Viral moments from spectacular dunks oh! to buzzer-beating three-pointers oh! and embarrassing crossovers. Driving on Conley. Stops. Oh! Highlights like these dominate social media feeds enhancing the league's global appeal and driving viewer engagement to new heights, which means that stars like Joel Embiid, who can drop 70 points in a single game and become a household name overnight. But offense is still only half of the equation. Every player in the NBA has the ability to spend a few summers working out and improving, especially with talented trainers like Jordan Lawley, Chris Brickley, and Drew Hanlon. But there's one thing which you'll never see 90% of players ever work on, 
And that brings me to the next factor, defense. Argument that players today are getting to the free throw line more because they're flopping, it's not exactly true. Free throw rates across the NBA have gone down. While that stat may be true, it's hard to ignore the amount of free throws Embiid shot this game. He shot 23 and made 21. If you give a near 90% free throw shooter that many attempts, he's going to make some. But how did he get to the line so many times? JJ Redick was right about one thing. NBA offenses have become much harder to defend. And this is because of three key changes. The first being off the dribble threes. Some people may know it as the Stephen Curry effect. Curry, way down top. Bang! Bang! Oh! Stephen Curry's emergence as a prolific shooter, especially from deep and off the dribble, has had a massive impact on the NBA. Curry's unique ability to launch accurate three-pointers without even needing to set his feet or rely on a catch-and-shoot has forced defenses to extend beyond the traditional perimeter. This change in spacing stretches the defense thin and creates more space for offensive plays to unload. Take a look at how much space there is in the paint when Embiid catches the ball. While Embiid does have the ability to knock down threes, he's more of a threat attacking the basket downhill. And this causes Wemby to back up, giving him enough space to pull up from the mid-range. One of the best examples of this threat on defense is this play from LeBron. A great no look decision. As LeBron catches the ball, Lopez and Randall are forced to make a decision. As LeBron simply looks to pass to an open Kyle Korver, one of the best shooters to ever play in the league, both defenders quickly jump towards him to close out, leaving a wide open dunk for Zizic. Although not everyone is a prolific shooter in the NBA, there has been a significant increase in three-point attempts and efficiency. During the 2015-16 season, where we witnessed one of the best shooting teams go 73-9, the Warriors shot just under 32 threes a game, shooting 41.6%. In today's NBA, those numbers would be just enough to play second to last above the Detroit Pistons. The emphasis on defending the three-point line has opened up opportunities for offenses to exploit mismatches inside or find cutters moving towards the basket further illustrating the strategic cat and mouse game between NBA offenses and defenses. But this one change in offense and defense has led to one thing that is shaking up the entire league. Outrageous. What happened tonight, this is completely BS. This is shame. Shame for the referees, shame for the league to allow this. There has been a serious number of ejections this season on players you would have never thought. A much-known Draymond Green had been ejected three times this season and given a much-needed suspension for his behavior in games. However, when players like Jason Tatum have received six technicals and been ejected twice, you have to question some of the officiating going on in the league. I mean, I'm a very self-aware person. I understand the time and score game was, you know, we was, game was pretty much over. Appreciate or like the, uh, you know, the no call on those last two drives. Referees are constantly attacked in every sport, but over the past few years, they have become a serious problem in the NBA. From extremely controversial calls to questionable ejections and texts, this has been going on for too long, and the lack of accountability is unacceptable. A lot of these questionable calls are highlighted in Embiid's 70-point game. Nico Just take Batum a look at some of these the foul calls. Reese Maxey over to Joel Embiid. Who Joel goes right back to him. One pump fake. And Many of these shots just look like he's flopping. While Wembenyama did jump to contest, he jumped to the side of Embiid to avoid contact. But Embiid extends his elbow and even clips Wemby in the face. Or take this play for example. After Embiid spins off of Collins, he hooks his arms as he literally tries to just put his hands up. Is that really a foul or just a smart play? The amount of inaccurate calls is very concerning. There were several cases where the NBA's officiating last two-minute reports revealed that bad calls were made in the ending minutes of games, shifting the outcome. In situations where the correct judgment is needed the most, the officiating almost takes a complete 180 and just straight up sucks, leaving not just teams and players frustrated, but also fans. And if this is something you're fed up with too, let us know in the comments. Now, while it's unrealistic to expect the perfect ref, it just doesn't exist. Being a referee is hard, but when your performance in your job is changing the entire league in real time, there has to be much higher consequences. The relationship between players, coaches, and teams and refs 
is declining, to say the least. The NBA needs to do a better job at preventing these outliers and make some changes to the people who have the power to influence the outcome of games.